lot of people ask me about kids and pickleball. What are the kinds of things you should do to get kids playing? Because after all, it's a sport that's pretty accessible to a lot of kids. It doesn't take up a ton of space. Their bodies are smaller, but the court's relatively small too. So unlike, let's say, a full-size tennis court, they can kind of manage the space pretty well. Paddles tend to be a little bit smaller, although I think they could be even smaller still and focused on juniors. But anyway, and so there are lots of things you can do. But you don't always have to be on a pickleball court to have a lot of fun doing pickleball related things and even building some pickleball skills. So I decided to ask my daughter, who's right now six and a half, if she wants to go to the park and fool around and play some pickleball with me. Let's see what she says. Hey, uh, Sass. Yeah? Wanna go play pickleball? Sure. Okay, let's go. All right, so we're here at our neighborhood school. It's actually my daughter's school. And I figured we'd come and like play a little bit, fool around, just get some touches in. She's not especially coordinated or doesn't really play pickleball uh, or other racket sports. But what I want is for her to come out and it's something fun that we can kind of do together. So here are some examples of some of the kinds of things that we like to do just on a random day at the park. I think it's really important that kids have time to fool around and to experiment. So notice how I walk away, not really paying too much attention, and just encourage her to hit the ball around a little bit. Yes. Oh, how many was that? Two and a half. Two and a half. Let's even do three. So I want this to be a low pressure situation, but also to develop some paddle and ball skills. So learning to self rally is a good way to get that going. Ooh, touched it. Six and a half. New record. One, two. <laughs> okay, so you'll notice at this point she wasn't having a lot of success. I was worried that she was going to get frustrated and say, Dad, I don't really want to do this anymore. So that's where I stopped things and changed it up. And so this is a really important part of coaching, whether you're coaching in a formal way or an informal way, is knowing when when is enough enough when it comes to a particular activity. And if they're not having success, if they're not sort of 50% or more, then it's probably too hard for what they're doing. And so then it's a good time to mix it up. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I hit a rock too. I think this is my favorite ball. I like this color. Ay ay ay. Ay ay ay. Good one. Woo! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. One, two, huh, three, four. Ay ay ay. A continuous partner rally with no net or obstacle in the way is a good way to develop a sense of sending the ball back and forth with control. At least, ideally. Hey, do you remember, can you turn your hand over so your knuckles are up? Yeah, like that. You remember how sometimes we hit that way? Sometimes we hit this way. Forehand, it's called. Backhand. Can you try a couple backhands? You can still hit them up, in, like straight up in the air. There. Good, again. That was great. Nice try. There, and good look. Now, how do you think you can make it go up more? Yeah, just tilt it up. Perfect. Ready? So there. Yeah, I got it. Ooh, rock. Ooh. Did I hear your knuckle? Okay, gotta hit the middle. There. 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 Yes. Yeah. Ooh. Where you pretend you're you're a server at a restaurant and you've got a <laughs> oh, wow. hold dinner, drop it and then catch it. Didn't get much of a bounce. And can she catch it? Whoa! Oh, pretty close. Okay, pretty tricky, isn't it? So I've got an idea. We're gonna do this together. Toss, there, hit. Nice, and then I catch. Toss, there, hit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Push down your paddle. Ready? Toss, there. Hit. 
At this point, she was struggling enough. It made sense to teach her something, but keep it really quick and then move on. I asked her to try to point the paddle face at the wall, because the paddle angle is what controls the direction. Notice how stable she tries to keep the face here. And even though the ball doesn't perfectly come back to me, it's still something that she's paying attention to and working on. And notice here that even if she doesn't have really solid contact, I still praise the fact that she's trying to control the paddle face. This is really important. She's doing what I asked. And while there's still other areas she needs to work, it's important to praise where she's having success. There, there. Perfect. Best one. Best one. Now pickleball is only a small part about racket skills or paddle skills, being able to hit the ball. So much of pickleball is being able to receive a ball well. And you can see that she was struggling a little bit with getting to the right place and figuring out where the ball was going to be. So why don't we do a few activities that'll make it easier for her to track that ball, figure out where she needs to be, so that as those paddle skills develop, then she'll be able to have more success. I'm gonna throw the ball against the wall. As soon as I toss it, you have to turn figure out where it is and try to catch it with two hands. She's ready for action. There we go, ready? There it goes, and she turns and catch. One point for Cecily. Ready. Oh, no cheating. Set, go. Turn, and where is it? Ooh, lucky two points, very good. Okay, ready, where are you going? Ready. Well, you don't look much like an athlete right now. Be ready to move, yeah, and there it is. Cut. Oh, too easy. Okay, we make it harder. So at this point, she had success right away. It was too easy. And that's actually really good because now that's something she can feel proud of, right? Even if she didn't do everything else perfectly, she's doing this well. And now we get to advance and make it more challenging. Again, this kind of back and forth between having success and having failures is going to be really important for her development and her sense that she is improving and she wants to continue to do so. Good throw. Go. <laughs> Oh, nice one. Go. <laughs> you got it. And time. Everyone likes to end on a high note, so let's play a little game. I put my phone up against the basketball net, and the goal is to roll your ball so it stays closest to the camera. Oh my God. That's a good one. That's a good one. Ooh. 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 Oh, no. That's pretty good. Am I allowed to blast yours out of the way? No. What? That's not allowed. Where's that one going? That one's going to the portable. All right, you win this one. Good game. Okay, should we go home now? One. What's that? Two. Wait, are we playing again? And after all that, it's time to go for a bike ride home. Did she become an amazing pickleball player in this short period of time? No, of course not. But we had a great time together, and it's more likely than not that she's going to want to do it again. All right, so there you go. Those are some of the things you can do with kids, not even on a pickleball court. If you have a pickleball court, that's great. Use that court. But if you don't, just go to the park or go on your driveway or parking lot. Watch out for cars, I guess. Fool around, get them used to having the ball on the paddle, experiment, hitting forehands and backhands, make up silly little games. But the thing you should do is make sure it is fun. You want kids to have this great association between playing pickleball and having a really good time on the court. And the more fun that they have on the court, the more likely that they're going to want to keep playing and develop some new skills and maybe even play a real game of pickleball.